Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about the conditions required for equilibrium of four force members. Now there is no fixed condition or there is no fixed equation whenever we want to find the equilibrium of four or force members. Therefore, in such cases, what we do, whatever known forces are there, they are combined into a single force by using the vector diagrams. They are combined and they are combined in such a way that the whole system having four or more force members is reduced to a system having two or three force members because we know the condition of static equilibrium for two and three force members. Right. For two force members, the forces should be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction and along the same line of action. And for three force members, the three forces, their line of action should pass through a point which is known as point of concurrency and all three force, the resultant is zero. So in this we can see an example, right? A four force member in which F1, F2, F3 and F4 are given, right? And we are also given the dimensions of all the sides of the rectangle. Now, in this case, let's assume that F1 and F4 are known forces and we do not know the value of, let's say, F2 and F3. There may be any question. We are just taking a general example. So, what we'll do, the first thing, whatever known forces are there, I said that I know the value of force F1 and F4. We know the magnitude plus we know their direction and we also know their sense that they are acting at angle of 30 degree to the horizontal. So what we do, we can reduce these two forces to a single force. So we draw this line of action of the force F1, the line of action of the force F4, right? So if it has to be reduced to a force which is equivalent to the sum of these two forces, so we'll plot a vector diagram, right? So we take a scale. Let's suppose that F1 is given 100 Newton, right? And F4 is given, let's say, 150 Newton. So whenever these questions are given, we take a proper scale. We say, let's assume that 20 Newton is equal to 1 centimeter or 50 Newton is equal to 1 centimeter as per the requirement. You have to draw this diagram taking all the scale, all the angles that are given, then we plot F1, which is parallel to this line F1 because this is at 30 degree to the horizontal. And taking the scale, we plot F1 in this direction and the arrow, the sense is also given. Right? F4 is given, so we draw F4 taking the proper scale that we have assumed and the resultant is this F. Now, whatever is the resultant, it will pass through the line of action of these two forces. So we extend the line of action of F1 and F. This is the line of action, right? So for F1 and F4, we extend the line of action and the point at which the line of action of these two forces F1 and F4 meet, it is the point at which the resultant force F1 will be applied. Now we know, now this system is reduced to three forces F2, F3 and F. So for three forces the condition is F, F2 and F3 the line of action should coincide at a point. So here what we do we extend the line of actions of F2, of F3 and F and we see that yes they do coincide at a point which is point O and now we can find the resultant of forces F, F2 and F3. We already know F, F is already there right? We know the direction of F2 but not the magnitude. So we'll draw the value of F2. Yes, we'll draw F2 and for F3 we know it is parallel to the line which is given and we draw it and you'll get the complete diagram and we can measure. If let's say the question says that find the value of F3. So you can measure this line and according to scale you can convert it into Newton. Right? Or let's say if it says find the angle which it makes with the vertical. So we can simply measure the angle and you'll get the value. 